All right, here is the video review for DX9's Sonic Wizard. And I believe I got everything with him. He did not come packaged, so I have no instructions. But uh, Sonic Wizard, DX9's little war and pocket version of Soundwave. And again, here's Iron Factory Starscream to give you an idea of just how small he is in his tape deck mode. It's, you can see, there he is in the palm of my hand. He's very small. And there's not a whole lot to tape deck mode. Um, here, here he is. He's just folded up. His arms and his weapons are back here. Um, he does have, the button doesn't work. He does have an opening little thing here. And if I can tap laser beak out, there we go, laser beak slid out. And I also have a little tip of his gun hiding back in there because there's not really a good place to store it here in alternate mode. Unless, uh, unless there's something that is in the instructions that I'm missing. So if anybody knows of any sort of official place to store the tip of his uh, hand cannon, in 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 alt mode uh please let me know because i would love to love to be aware of that information but he does have three cassettes you saw laser beak was just hiding inside of him he also comes with rat bat and a dual thick rabbit you can also fit inside of him probably not with the uh this little sonic gun tip in there but he the the, the cassette it, you, you cannot fit both of these guys in there at least not that i found and i don't want to risk trying uh to shove them or maybe they fit like that hold on let's see Oh, okay. First rat bat has to go in all the way. You have to go in all the way. Nope. And then maybe if I use laser beacon like that, they'll both fit. No, they, no it's, it's going to break that hinge, and I don't want to do that. So, uh, knock them out. But Ravage, even though he is thicker than the other cassettes, because of how he transforms, he will fit in the chest here. And you can store him in there. And, and close it up all the way. Although he may not, we may have to poke him out later. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we'll, we'll get to the cassettes in a minute. We'll focus on uh, Sonic Wizard himself first. And the first thing you want to do is unpeg his arm, his hands from the bottom of the weapons, or maybe just pull the weapons out and they'll and tab the weapons and they'll unpeg because they are. I don't know if that's an official step, but it does help to peg them in. Makes, they, they peg onto the back here, but you can also peg that end piece into the hands that are folded up, and it makes it a lot more secure. I'll go ahead and pop them off. You can see one has just a receptacle, as does this one. That's how they peg on to the thing, and the, uh, the hand cannon does have a longer peg for him to hold it in robot mode, and then you just take this and plug it into the end there for his hand weapon. So we'll unpeg those. Uh, go ahead and straighten the fit the the wrists out. Uh, you can open up this panel right here. Lift his head up on a separate panel, and that's if, if you ever get a cassette stuck in there, you can push it out from the back. Sometimes you can get your finger in enough far enough if you have a small pinky, uh, but you can push a cassette out from the back that way if one ever gets stuck, as ravages want to do because of his size. The legs come out to the side, and then this hinge inside the leg, you lift up and flip forward to uh, correctly get his legs in there. Uh, they do like to pop off that ball joint up there, but it should flip all the way around and up. Yeah, so flip this up like this, then flip it down right at the knee, and then fold it up at the back, and that's how you get his leg properly transformed there. Rotate it so the ball joint comes down on the bottom. And you actually want these to face backwards at this point, because while he has all of his cassette mode uh, player buttons here, when you rotate him at the waist, he's got a couple of fake ones on the back. Uh, so the actual cassette player bit hides back here. The head just flips up and folds down like that. The feet also, these also like to pop off the ball joints that they're on, just because of how it's designed. The amount of pressure needed to pull this whole assembly around is more than the ball joint holds it on with. So uh, it is possible to get them to transform without popping off, but uh, it takes a little bit of finesse, which clearly I don't have. Um, so yeah, flip those down and around, and then fold, just fold his arms forward here at the shoulder, and there he is in robot mode. He's got one fist and one little pointy finger, so he can kind of reach up and kind of reach up and... Uh, push his own little eject button there. 
but it does give him, like, like I said, he does have the ball joints at the fist, so there's some rotation there as well as some up and down movement. Ball joint at the elbow, ball joint at the shoulder. His head is also on a ball joint, so he can look up and around. He does have a waist swivel, ball joint hips, thigh swivel, hinge knees, and then the ball joint at the ankle. So he's decently poseable. Again, the shoulder cannon just pegs on right up here. And then the hand cannon can be held in his hand. And also the finger kind of works as a pointing like laser beak go type of pose, if you wish. <coughs> Excuse me. The cassettes. So laser beak, laser beak and, and rat bat transform the same way. They're basically the same transformation with different heads. Uh, so laser beak, you just kind of pull his wings out and back and then flip his bird head out and about. So it faces straight forward. And there you have a little laser beak that doesn't peg into Soundwave's arm, but you can have him rest up there if you want. Rat bat, again, the same thing. You kind of pull his arms or his wings, not his arms, wings down and around like that. Flip his head around, although his head is shaped differently, sculpted differently from laser beaks, and it comes all the way down and around like that to kind of give him the bat look that his old cassette did. Ravage being two parts is a little bit more involved. You just kind of want to take him at this white hinge in the middle and basically flatten him out here. Uh, take these two end pieces and fold them together to form his head. Bring his... Uh, legs down at the ball joint like that that's his front legs done and do the same on the rear legs you want to lift them up like this and then rotate them down so the missile is on top and then flip down the little white part here and then he does have a little tail that you can flip out back here if I can get my finger in there Again, small prying tool, doesn't hurt. And there's his tail. And there is, now he has to stand straight or hunched. He, he doesn't rotate back the other way. But there is a little tiny ravage in robot mode. It's not quite the world's smallest ravage with the head that was the size of a grain of rice. But, um, but yeah, you got a little ravage there too. Oh, laser beak fells. Anyway, but yeah, it's a neat little set. It's a nice, small little sound wave. I love the cassettes. Um, I think they're, like I said, laser beaks a little, and wrap out a little simple. Ravage is actually really brilliantly engineered for such a tiny little cassette dude. And they look good with, with Wizard. Sonic Wizard himself, I think, is a real nice sound wave. Both in, he's nicely posable in robot mode and uh, has a neat little cassette player mode. So uh, yeah, I think he's definitely worth nabbing and the cassettes are just kind of an added bonus uh here he is with the iron factory star scream so a little, he's a little smaller than he should be with other pocket size figures but for dx9's line he seems to be about about, about right here he is with devastator or their hulky i guess i should say so yeah a neat little pocket sound wave with some cool little cassettes there is DX9's Sonic Wizard.